Do aliens have souls, or are they godless beings that travel the universe? John saw what looked like a large man in a chair, maybe best described as a throne. John wondered who he might be. John, we need you now. Please wake up. Jenny cried. John felt like he was falling. Then he came to an abrupt stop. He hadn't felt like this since he fell ten feet onto concrete, landing on his hands and knees. Am I in heaven? John asked as he opened one eye. No, we're still in hell, Jenny answered, then giggled. We're alive? John asked. Oh, God, I must be alive. I heard all over. No time. I need you to take charge now, Jenny informed. Is Johnny okay? John got out just above a whisper. He will be. Please, John, get on your feet. We have company to deal with. Jenny moved to get out of the way for others to lift John. Tony and Peter stepped in and gave John their arms as they clasped his wrist to lift him to a standing position. Dad, you didn't duck very well. Tony was a bit sarcastic. You taught us better than this. Peter added to the jab. Stop picking on me, sons, when I'm not my... Who's that? John was looking at the large man sitting in a chair like a throne. The man was enormous. John looked towards Johnny and saw that part of Johnny's face had been burned off. Two of the four girls were on their feet. One was sitting up and the other had her arm raised. John said to no one, so what I saw was real. He turned back to the man in the chair and said again, who's that? Vid was there next to John. We don't know. Well, let's find out. John stood tall and shouted, who are you? All heard. I'm lord of this realm, John. What is it that you want? These aliens have been feeding upon humans, the children of God, for millions of years. I want them gone from the earth. I want our planet Earth returned to the Garden of Eden once again where the children of God can pursue life, liberty, and justice with the rights to be free and happy. And what do you want, Stirrup? The Lord was addressing the head of the aliens. We claim Earth as our colony. Our ancestors arrived on Earth three and one-half million years ago. Stirrup answered, We have been guiding the affairs of Earth and mankind for all of that time. Do you agree to abide by the laws of Earth, Stirrup? The Lord asked. What laws are those, Lord? Stirrup asked. Aliens may visit, but are not allowed to interfere with the lives of the children of God. The Lord said, I do not know of this law, my Lord. Stirrup shouted. Have you not read the writing over the door of your control room on the moon? The Lord asked. Yes, many times it says, leave the people of the planet alone. Stirrup ended speaking very slowly and just above a whisper as he became very afraid. He looked at his wife, realizing this may be their end. I find you and your people in violation of the prime directive. I also find you and your people in violation of the second directive. To be specific, leave the people of the planet alone. Your ancestors have been warned twice before. This matter is closed. You and all of your people will reside in the sun until the end of this eternity, the Lord announced. The railings opened, and even though there were a lot of cries of no, John and all the humans standing on the platform watched as over 10,000 men and women aliens floated to the sun and blew up as they got close. John, what would you be willing to give up stopping all suffering on earth? The Lord asked. What do you mean by giving up, Lord? John asked. Would you give up the lives of your family and friends? No, my lord. Would you give up the Russians that are here or the people from Montreal? No, my lord. Or would you give up your life to end all suffering on planet Earth? To create heaven on Earth? Before John answered, Willie said, Bad man, he hey lel, pronounced hey lely. Willie sent a shield much like what he had been throwing at the ISIS-flown F-35S. Sam and Mary Kennedy was standing by. Mary started to say no, but cut herself short when she realized the act had been done. Sam, teach me how to throw a shield, Mary said as she watched another shield crash into the Lord of this realm. John also watched this scene unfold and frowned. He asked himself, who was Halel? Father, I'm pretty sure Halel is Hebrew for Lucifer. Teresa answered, the light bearer. Lucifer would reside in the sun, and that would make him the light bearer. It does make sense. By now, Lucifer had sent a fireball at Willie. Ben and Sam had both stepped forward with their massive mental shields, stopping the fireball, then sent it back to Lucifer, driving him back towards the sun a few feet. John, why are we picking a fight with this lord? Vid Poussin asked just after John released his first shield. 
Vid, I don't make deals with the devil, John answered, or with Lord Lucifer here. Oh, Lucifer, like Satan. Could this be Satan? Vid asked. Satan is in hell for his betrayal of mankind 10,000 years ago. John threw another shield. Probably in there. He probably made a deal with Lucifer, just like Lucifer wanted to have with me. How can I help? I don't know how to throw a shield. Vid asked. We need to throw everything we can at him, including the kitchen sink. They were making progress, but it was slow. John did not know if they could go for very many hours throwing shields. He looked down the scaffold. His friends and families had joined in, but nobody else. Lucifer was losing ground slowly, but he was still able to get off many fireballs. So far, none had made a direct hit on the scaffold, but they had come close with their tremendous heat affecting all. After a dozen more shields, John looked around and realized Vid had gotten everyone to join in. Jenny's eyes were big in wonder. The Americans and the Russians were working side by side. John paused long enough to look far down the catwalk. There must be over 10,000 men and women in dark purple. John wondered, who are they? Montreal? He threw another shield. Lucifer was being hit by thousands of shields per minute, maybe more than 10,000. He looked to be about half as big as he had appeared 30 minutes before. Lucifer reached out with his massive big hand and grabbed the scaffolding where John and all his family were. Create big shields now, John screamed. Soon there were pieces of Lucifer's fingers and thumb falling in and around the scaffold. Johnny, Tony, and Ben, with Willie under them, create an enormous shield cutting Lucifer at his wrist. The hand fell away and the roar gave everyone the idea that that must have hurt bad. Many more shields were thrown at Lucifer. This continued for many more minutes until Lucifer's throne caught fire. Then there was a gigantic explosion. When the fireball cleared, Lucifer and his throne were gone. Everyone leaned towards the railings, more mentally exhausted than physically. Let's go to God, John said. Jenny, tell them to take us to God. John passed out again. Tony, Willa, and Jesus whistled, making circles above their heads, then together. They counted one, two, and three. The transport happened. John woke up sitting in his Christport. Everyone was standing looking at him. Vid, sit to the right of me. John suggested still leaning on Jenny. We will, Vid said. There was his wife Maya, his son with a friend, then Dimitri and Sally, then two hundred of his men and women. To John's left was Jenny, then his family and friends, and his two hundred minute men and women. There also were thousands of others in dark purple sweatshirts and pants. A man approached John and Jenny. Hello, Mr. President and First Lady. I am Petrie with the Montreal chapter of the Minute Men and Women. Your son, Johnny Taylor, called us up and asked us to join the fun. We called up the entire chapter when God told us we were going to be in trouble. They all turned out almost 10,000. The giants in the fort were on our list to take to God. We had tried several times but realized we needed someone on the inside. Who was the big man in the chair? Archangel Lucifer, we believe. John had stood presenting his hand to Petrie. The two men shook hands. Are we in trouble? Petrie asked. Willie had crawled up into John's Christport. Trouble. No trouble. John noticed a young lady walking towards them. She had on a white dress made of the finest silks and satins. She had red hair, and when she got near, John could see the beautiful green eyes. This could only be one person. Excuse me, Petrie. Maybe we are about to find out. John turned to hug the beautiful lady. Hi, Daddy, Gaia whispered. What have we done? John was prepared to hear the worst. Everything seems different. You're all grown up, and I sense I'm going to lose you. It is very different, Daddy. Gaia giggled as she hugged Jenny. Hi, Mom. You're all grown up. You're beautiful, Jenny gushed as she looked up to this grown-up version of Gaia. She was in flat shoes, but was still as tall as John Six. Vid and Maya also received hugs and greetings. Both families were standing around Gaia. You have eliminated Archie Angel Lucifer from this universe. He was the major obstacle in heaven on earth. Mankind was very close once before, and Lucifer manipulated the Christ Satan into an agreement that caused a world war. Many earth changes happened, 
and the continent Atlantis was sunk below the waters of the Atlantic. By eliminating the aliens and their human friends, you have also eliminated the one major sin that still existed on planet Earth. Gaia turned to Jenny. Mom, Dad, can I trade with Bert? I need to make my presence on Earth soon. I need to be born. The transition into the fourth dimension is ready to begin. Heaven on Earth and a thousand years of peace starts as soon as I am there. Many of the things you wrote about in Revelations 2,000 years ago will be happening. My birth is the trigger for the shift into the fourth dimension. John had a thought. He giggled, then said, What if we had twins? John asked, It looks like we have picked up many more sets of helping hands. John looked at Tia and Bobby, talking about something exciting. The other three girls were involved in the excitement. They were drinking water and had gotten new clothes and truly did look like angels. Yes, Jenny said she knew everything would be okay. Even so, she did not know where the power was coming from. Thank you, God, for my family. Gaia smiled. I'll see you soon, Mom and Dad. The dress was on the floor. Gaia had disappeared. Jenny grabbed John's arm. Help me sit down, John. I'm not balanced anymore. I will need a bit of time to get used to this. There seems to be three of us now. John, when will we see your daughter? When is she to be born? Vied asked excitedly. He had been listening to the conversation. February 19th, Vid, John answered as the two men watched millions of angels descend to stand with them. John heard joyful music. Petri, we got our answer. I'll tell the world the good news, Mr. President. He handed John a business card with contact information. Come visit in the spring with your family. We will do that. John and Petri shook hands again. John looked down at the card, Petri Tollifer. John looked up to find the man was already running back to his group to tell them the exciting news. Vid was looking at his phone. John, that is the next full moon. John sat down and made room for Willie in his lap. John, you look like you have seen a ghost. Jenny giggled. He showed Jenny and Vid the card. In the year of our Lord 1066 William of Normandy, the conqueror battled the King of England, Harold II. The man that led the first three charges was a many-time great-uncle of mine, Baron William Talifer. During the century following that time, the Talifer name became Taylorsome. John laughed. Talifer is to the metal as Taylor is to cloth. We are all related, you know. Vid answered, I like you being a little bit French, just not too much. The two men laughed. Before today, when was your daughter Gaia coming? The summer of 2049. John and Jenny both answered. Then we have done a good thing, Vid thought out loud while looking around. I think we are having a party. Millions of humans were joining John and his warriors with God. Willie was sitting on John's lap facing Jenny. Ice cream? Before John could answer, Willie had a four-scoop ice cream cone in his hand. I guess we won the battle, Jenny said, and by winning this battle, we have finally won the war. John kissed his wife. It has only been going on for 3.5 million years. All we have are the Arabs and the moon to deal with, Jenny was stating. Johnny was walking towards them. John there is our big son, all better again, Jenny said after she had a lick of Willie's ice cream. We did good, Willie said. John instantly went into the teacher role. Willie, we did well. Not good, Willie frowned. We did well. Yep, John answered. Jenny giggled. That's yes, John. Not yep. The eyes of John and Vid met. So this is peace? Vid asked. I think we have two or three more battles, John suggested. The Jews and the Arabs need to come to visit, and John, Vid, you two, and your mates need to go visit Antarctica. Both men heard from God. Yes, Father, they both said. How is Africa coming along? John asked. It should be done by February 19th, VD answered. We started in the south and are working north. We only have the African Arabs to bring here. Johnny had come up to the two men. How's your eye? John asked his son. His face looked fine. Better than my old one. I'm as good as new again. Johnny answered. As he started to kneel, a comfortable chair appeared behind him. So he sat and talked with his father and Vid. How did that happen? John asked. I got hit by several phasers all at the same time fired at my head. 
Johnny answered. What happened to you, Dad? I got hit by several phasers all over my body. My pacemaker stopped along with my heart. John answered his son. Johnny took a deep breath. I'm glad we're all okay. Do you know when South America will be complete? John asked his son. Sometime around February 1st. Our target date is between the end of January to early February. Why? Johnny asked. There has been a change because of what we just did. Your little sister is going to be born on February 19th, along with Bert and Matt. We are to start the thousand years of peace. John shared, heaven on earth. Oh, Johnny thought for a minute. What else needs to be done? The Arabs and the Jews. Both Vid and John said together. And Antarctica. I'm in. Johnny nodded. Did you know that some of the Minutemen were in Iraq and they know a few words? Johnny thought for a few seconds. I can bring the SEALs over and they can help. That is good to know. It will come in handy. John turned to Vid. Vid, how is your spaceship? It is amazing to be able to fly around this world of ours and see the different wonders of the Earth. I find flying in the F-335 the most relaxing thing in the world. To hear my son squeal with excitement as he sees something new. To be able to buy a bottle of wine in France, bread in Italy, and cheese in Switzerland, then go home and act like a newlywed. Vid laughed. What are you gentlemen talking about? This came from three different directions. Jenny on John's left, Maya on Vid's right, and Teresa just sitting down in her chair next to Johnny. We are warriors that see peace for a thousand years coming and are working on our romantic side. John explained. The three men laughed. John, Vid, and Johnny. We have been listening to a large part of our community asking God about the fort. That building was originally built just after the moon came to the station, circling the earth. They built several forts on the earth. The one in Montreal is the last one that has survived. That building goes hundreds of feet into the earth. As dust fell to earth, they simply built the fort higher and bigger. There's more these four little girls. Jenny looked at Tia and her three friends. They were created in test tubes and for the first few years were raised like we would raise cows or pigs for slaughter. Their whole purpose was for a gathering like tonight. They were going to butcher them and serve them as hors d'oeuvres for the gathering, Jenny growled. And the moon, if the moon is not moved, it will collide with Earth in about 300 years. There is an analog computer-like machine that is maintaining orbit. The giants did know how to take care of the computer. Without them, the computer will cease to function in a few years and shut down, and the obit will decay very quickly. God, how many more giants are alive and where are they? John asked. There are 271 on the moon and 49 on the lower floors of their castle at Montreal on Earth. The ones on the moon are the ones that are dying and their caregivers. The 49 on Earth are the ones that are raising the humans for food in the castle. Two of the giants are here. The one named Tia and her friends can lead you to the ones on Earth. The voice of God answered. Father, two are here? John asked. Yes, John, the two children of Stirrup and Marjamin. Take them into your family. They will explore my universe for you. Their mother has raised them void of humans in their diet. Their mother had created a seer. The mother knew how their time on earth was going to end. When you find the seer, bring her to me. I will make her a part of me. John looked up and standing about 20 feet away were the two children he and Jenny had met that first day with the giants. Both Lucy and Willie got down and went over to the two children, took their hands and brought them to John and Jenny. John turned to Jenny and the two just looked at each other. Their unspoken combination went on for several minutes. They were both asking questions and God was answering them. Petri Talifer had returned just before the giant kids had shown up and Jenny had him sit in one of the nearby empty Christ ports. He had heard the last part of what God had said about the 49 giants on the earth. That castle drew Petri and he didn't understand why. Many times you have been known as a Talifer. Castle forts mean many things to you in the past such as safety and they have been where your family has always been. Take charge of the fort, have it as a home for your family. Use the upper floors as the base for your Minutemen and women. The castle fort has 3.5 million years of history of your earth in the hundreds of different levels of its lower floors. 
open it to study and give tours to the public for a fee, which is to be used to cover the costs of preserving such. Allow your fellow man and woman to write books about what is to be found on those lower floors and ask for a 10% fee in the selling of any information they find. Be available. John will need you to help bring the last of the Arabs and Jews to me. The voice of God said, Am I to get married soon? Petri thought. Yes, Petri just sat there with a big smile on his face. Jenny turned to the two children. What are your names? The girl sniffed. Mama said when this happened, we are to forget our names. We are to ask you to name us. The girl cried. The boy was also crying. Jenny turned to John. My mother's name was Elizabeth. I remember Dad calling her Beth. John smiled. My father's name was Charles and went by the name Chuck. Ben and the twins joined Lucy and Willie standing around the two giant children. John motioned for the children to come closer. The boy handed Jenny an envelope. Jenny opened the envelope and started looking through what was in the envelope. She would look at a page, then give it to John to see. Kids, God has asked us to take these two into our home. God said it is important. They will help us to learn about the universe. What do you think? John asked. Willie, in his usual way, summed it up. Yes, he smiled. I think okay. Lucy looked at her brother. I agree. Yes. Terry looked at her brother and sister. God says so. Fanny looked at her sister, then turned to John and Jenny. We agree, too. Sally and Bobby arrived. They were also asked. They looked the two children over closely. Yes, from both. What do you think, Ben? It's up to you, son, John asked. The two giant children looked at Ben. They couldn't believe that other children had this kind of power, especially when it came to them. He's going to grow up and be ten feet tall. Ben looks at the boy. Have you ever fished? The boy shook his head. No! All of us are adopted. You'll be a brother and a sister. Let's do this, Daddy. Ben turned back to the boy. Do you like dogs? The kids were getting to know each other, talking about dogs and fishing in school. The letter from Marjamine, dear John and Jenny. My seer says our life comes to an end for me, my husband, and my people. So be it. We have nowhere to go. I've known this was coming for ten years. I have had my children tutored in English and French. The human teacher says they are very smart. They are pure. They have never eaten humans. Please forgive us. Don't hold our crimes against our children. You are about to have children. Please look upon mine as a mother and a father would. They are young. You can guide them as you wish. If they ask about us, please tell them that their parents love them very much. Marjamine, Mary, Empress of the Supreme Beings. Two pages were showing when each of the kids was born. There were no names with the information, although the sex of each was defined. Jenny asked God for a pen. She wrote onto the line for the boy, Charles John Taylor, for the girl she wrote Elizabeth Jennifer Taylor. She then showed the documents to John. He agreed. Jenny showed one other document that told of the boy and the girl becoming starship captains. Is it a good idea to show them this? Jenny asked. What if there was a sheet of paper that told you of your future? One where you would become the first lady of the North American continent and the director of medical services for over 300 million people on that continent. When in your life would you have liked to see that? Jenny started laughing. As soon as I could read. John and Jenny kissed. Jenny then called the two kids over so she could show them the documents. John thought for a minute, then turned to Vid. Could Mother Russia take on the project of moving the moon? We will take it on, Vid stated, although I sense it is going to disappear. You may be right. If not, then maybe we can park it out as one of Jupiter's or Saturn's moons. Then it would be available if we ever needed it again, John suggested. I'll work that into the equation. Vid smiled at a good idea. Now we need to focus on the Arabs and the children of Israel, John stated. Shall I bring King Arthur's knights together for this? Johnny asked. John smiled and nodded, then asked, Johnny, why did the Montreal chapter of the Minute Men and Women just happen to show up tonight? Contingency? Johnny laughed. I learned from my father a thing called contingency. What is contingency? Vid asked, not familiar with that English word. In projects, we always include an additional 10% or more 
to cover unexpected costs. We call it contingency, John shared. I think I like contingency very much. Vid laughed as he realized they owed their lives to the contingency part of the plan. He too had been hit with three of the phaser blasts. His body ached like he had been playing soccer with the army guys. He took a deep breath and felt his muscles start to feel better again. Anybody has any idea why we did not die from the phaser shots? John asked. The giants wanted us for food. Their phasers were on the lower settings while ours were on the highest, Johnny answered. John looked down at a very quiet Willie. He had his eyes closed. Are you asleep? Willie shook his head. No. What are you learning? John asked. How to bring the Arabs here? Willie smiled. You will have to share with me, Willie, how to do that. I'm giving you another star. You have certainly deserved it. John smiled. More gold, too? Willie was very much awake and excited. Yes, more gold, too, John said. Daddy, if I leave interest. Willie was thinking, will I get more? John was amazed. Here he is three years old, and he is working on the concept of compound interest. Yes, Willie. Is that good or is that well out, Willie asked. I don't know, son, but just between you and me, let's call it good. John laughed. Yes, really good. Willie's smile covered his face. John looked at the many faces looking at him. We have 28 days to bring all of the Arabs and Jews here. One big step towards peace. Let's do this. Everyone seemed to be excited about that goal. John turned towards Ved. Have you ever heard about King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table? Yes, but I was always told it was an English fable, Vid answered. Johnny, can I borrow Excalibur? John asked. Sure, Dad. It's on the wall over the fireplace at home. Bill and I cleaned it, and Herb at the hardware store made a scabbard for it. John transported the sword, and when Vid took a hold of it, he jumped a good three inches. What are your memories, Vid? John asked. Vid looked at John's eyes. I've looked into your eyes many times over thousands of years. He then turned to Jenny. This is part of your plan? Yes, you have been an equal part of it since the beginning, Jenny said. Vid thought for a second. And you were the Tsar's son in a past life. My bones from that life are in Siberia, John replied. When does your daughter become president of the world? Vid asked. God, when does Gaia becomes the president of the world? John asked. The two men were watching the biggest party the world had ever seen. Better than the end of World War II, or when a city or country wins a world title. This was everyone. More than a billion humans were celebrating a very happy occasion. The end of Lucifer, the end of cannibalism on Earth, and maybe the end of the elite that worship the devil on the planet. The understanding of the new age is about to begin. People were coming up to Jenny and bowing, then standing and throwing her a kiss. Maya had climbed into Vid's lap so she could talk to Jenny. The two women were laughing at the antics of people giving acknowledgement in a very fun way. Chuck and Beth were now sitting in Jenny's seat. 2059 was the answer from God. Gaia will be 40, and it is after Johnny's 20 years in office. John thought aloud. We'll be old men. Vid shared. We'll both be over 100 years old. Damn, I'm already 70 and consider myself old. John and Vid both laughed. Teresa stated an unusual fact. In the Chinese culture, they believe men and women do not mature until they reach the age of 80. I can believe that. I can hardly wait to grow up. John said. Both men laughed. It's a good day for a new world holiday, Vid said. January 21st. Yes, it is a very good day for a holiday. Do you think it will catch on? John asked. I think we will be around long enough to see, Vid said. Petri came up to John. God tells me we are relatives? How much of your ancestors do you know about? John asked. For hundreds of years, we were counts of Angoulême, France. Our line comes from Emperor Charlemagne. My many great-grandfather was Baron William Talifer, who died at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Petri took a deep breath. He led the first three charges for William of Normandy. He was killed on that third charge. The family received vast holdings of land in Kent and other places throughout England, Scotland, and Ireland. John added, 
Baron William Talifer was an uncle to my line. We ended up in Kent, and over a hundred years the name was changed several times to finally become Taylor. John added, I have the family tree. It's in a book that is hundreds of years old. Petrie said, It has been kept up to date down through the ages. I would very much like to see that book and take pictures and notes of my family, John said. We will make that happen. Petrie smiled. Do I call you cousin? Petrie laughed. Why, yes, cousin. 